Hello once again, loyal listeners and maybe new listeners. Thank you for tuning in for another episode of the Wealth of Geeks Movies, Money, and More podcast. Welcome to the Wealth of Geeks Movies, Money, and More podcast, where entertainment and finance collide. Join us as we bring together people each episode to debate the hottest topics in the world of entertainment and finance. So, whether you're a fan of Star Wars or side hustles, Marvel or money, this podcast has got you covered. And now, here's your host. I am your host, Sarah Gilliland, and today we have an exciting pop culture debate between two icons that have left a lasting mark on the music and entertainment industry in general. But before we get started with our debate, I want to introduce our two debaters here today. First, we have Stephanie Allen, and Stephanie is an information architect and technical writer with several years of experience developing and creating high-quality documents for a variety of industries. She specializes in end-user process documentation, policies and procedures, information security, and information technology documentation. And Stephanie also writes a lot of our trending topics for Wealth of Geeks. Welcome, Stephanie. Thank you. Good to be back. Yes, absolutely glad to have you back. You were such a fun debate with Tiffany last time we had you on. So, Jason, you better be prepared because Stephanie's coming for you. (laughs) Uh, And let me introduce Jason real quick. You guys may be familiar with him. He's been on a couple of episodes as well. But Jason Butler is the owner of My Money Chronicles a website where he discusses personal finance, side hustles, travel, and more. Jason is from Atlanta. Woo woo. He graduated from Savannah State with a BA in marketing, and Jason has been featured in Forbes, Discover, Investopedia, and of course, on wealthofgeeks.com. Thank you, Jason, for being here today. Thank you for having me again. Yeah, absolutely. You guys are, you two and Tiffany are some of the best guests because you guys have such good arguments and you really want to win. (laughs) So I'm very excited to have you both back. Um, Today, though, Jason, you've usually been discussing money topics with us and we are going to be talking pop culture. Who are you representing today? Who are you pulling for? Today I'm pulling for the one and only Prince. Yes. Yes. We are doing a Prince versus and Stephanie, who are you going to be? Uh, the King of Pop, Michael Jackson. Woo woo! All right, this is this is going to be a tough one, guys, because I like both of these artists a lot, and I have personal connections to their music, as I'm sure many people across the world do, because they were just such icons in their time. So I guess let me start, uh, Jason. We're going to let ladies go first. Stephanie, let's talk about your personal feelings about MJ and why you love him and why you wanted to pull for him today. <laughs> Um, I grew up listening to the, to Michael Jackson. I can remember some of my earliest memories of listening to the Jackson Five. And he's just been a part of my entire life from childhood on up. Um, when MTV first started, he really was like the artist to watch because that's when the Thriller album came out around the same time. And his videos were just so amazing and groundbreaking. And ever since then... He's just been an icon in so many levels with his music, his dancing, his performances. And he also had, in my opinion, probably the greatest Super Bowl halftime show ever in 1993. All right. Pulling out the big guns with the Super Bowl halftime show. And I I wondered (laughs) if we were going to talk about that because that would that is a that's kind of a defining moment Mm -hmm. um, for a lot of artists is being able to. Yeah, perform on their on their own, or maybe just have a guest come in with them during the Super Bowl halftime show. So, Jason, let me hear a little bit about your your uh, affiliation with Prince and why you love him and are going to rep him today. Yeah, like I love Prince. Um, I can remember growing up, my mom used to listen to a lot of Prince music, uh, like Purple Rain, Sign of the Times album. And I can remember being in an apartment and her just playing a little purple tape, and it would be um, Kiss, um, another um, what's the name of the song? Another ho- another lover song, and it just 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 memories from that stuff. Um, the older I get, the more I realize that he had more than just a couple of albums. Took a deep dive. I um, used to listen to his music driving to and from school, from to and to and from college back in the day, and just disrespectful what he stood for. Um, I I remember those couple of years when he changed his name from Prince, and just became like the symbol. Mm-hmm. It was going against the record label and stuff like that, and just how he reinvented himself. 
so much over the years. And he also has an excellent halftime show in 2006 that was pretty dope in Miami. And it actually rained when he performed Purple Riot. So that was interesting mm -hmm. and kind of cool at the same time. Almost as if it was a sign <laughs> <laughs> that it was his time to shine. I love it. So, I mean, I hate to bring up anything that's negative about them because we definitely want to keep this a positive uh, podcast. But if you were to say why MJ is better than Prince, Stephanie, what you got? What are, What's your argument against Prince? <laughs> um, I would say that Michael Jackson has had a longer career than Prince and that it gave him more time to really put his stamp on pop culture. Uh, remember Michael Jackson was one of the ones who started um, the We Are the World song. He helped organize that. Um, he just had a lot of great albums as a group with the Jackson Five, and also as an individual artist. His albums are just memorable. All right, Jason, you got a response to that? <laughs> yeah, I think I have a response to that. Um, I think Prince is better just because Shoot, man, a lot of more a lot of people can relate to him. Um, while he may not have sold as much, def well, he definitely didn't sell as much as Prince. I mean, as Michael Jackson. Um, he sold a lot of albums, and again, he reinvented himself a lot more than uh, Michael Jackson did. Like Prince was still having, still coming out with hits later, a lot more hits later in his career than MJ did. And I just was just just could just vibe and relate with Prince a lot more than a little bit more than MJ. Mm-hmm. So what do you think about his, both of them have had, you know, appearances in movies and, and maybe even TV shows and other artists' music videos. What do you think Prince's contribution to that is? Because Michael Jackson, I feel like, is pretty well known for his, I mean, Stephanie brought up the Thriller um, album. That video is pretty iconic. Well, shoot, Purple Rain is pretty iconic as well. This, this um, is yeah, it's very <laughs> iconic. Like, when, if you ask the Prince, if you ask, um, if you ask just like a novice fan or anybody, what album did Prince come out with? They're gonna say Purple Rain, and Purple Rain came out in 1984 as well as the movie. Um, I want to say he won several Grammy awards for the album. Um, the movie did well in theaters, and literally they show it all the time on TV as well. It still gets a lot of play to this day. Um. A lot of people still go to Minnesota, go to Minneapolis and check out Paisley Park and some of the other places that were in the movie just because they saw it in the movie and they turned some of those things into like tourist destination as well. That's pretty good. I mean, he was pretty famous for that. And Stephanie, like we said, we've discussed the Thriller video, but what else do you think Michael Jackson was known for the most, maybe the or maybe the best, best remembered for? <laughs> I think he was known mostly for his dancing. Mm -hmm. I remember watching uh, the Motown 25th anniversary, I believe it was 1983, and he introduced the moonwalk, and that was the first time anyone had ever done a dance like that, and I just remember being blown away, and the reaction from everyone else was just amazement. So I think he was really known for his dancing and just how he revolutionized dance. I think that's pretty fair. Do you think Prince was as good of a dancer as Michael Jackson, Jason? No, um, nah, Prince wasn't. Prince was a, definitely a good dancer. Um, he might not have been as good as MJ. Um, he didn't have, he didn't have um, the moonwalk in his repertoire or anything like that. Um, but I will say that Prince was a much better musician than Michael Jackson. Um, mm -hmm. He could play all types of instruments, whether it's the drum, the drum, the guitar, um, or other instruments as well. Just like for example, if you listen to um, Computer Blue, just just listen to after he finishes verse, it has like a whole minute of him just jamming out on the guitar, and Michael Jackson can't do that. That's true. <laughs> That's fair. I was gonna say, Stephanie, what what do we have to say about MJ and his? That's it. <laughs> yeah, Michael Jackson's repertoire was definitely limited to basically singing and dancing. He didn't play any instruments. Like Prince, I know, played multiple instruments. He was pretty much a one-man band all by himself. Uh, but Michael Jackson, like I said, I think his influence was just his versatility with his music, how it kind of, you know, transcended race, it transcended income, it transcended um, just every kind of barrier he was able to cross. And I think his, with his music and his dancing, he was able to do that. What do you think about Prince in regards to that? Because I was thinking about, as she was talking, um, Michael Jackson's pretty much worldwide appeal. And I feel like Prince had a decent appeal across the globe, but 
maybe more so at home. I actually think Prince had a worldwide appeal as well. Um, he had several tours. Um, just I don't. I, I, I guess I would start off with the Purple Rain tour uh, because the movie did so well. He was able to tour across the world with that. Then he also had the um, the nineteen ninety nine tour, which actually was before that. Then when um, Around the World and the Day came out after Purple Rain, they toured for that. And then again in nineteen eighty seven, Sign of the Times came out, which is actually another classic Prince album. Um, some people actually say that album may be better than Purple Rain. I know he toured with that. And then with Batman, the first Batman that came out in 1989, uh, something depending on people's age, they may not remember that he did the Batman soundtrack. So that was... I remember that. I was hoping you'd bring it up because that's a good soundtrack. <laughs> so that was a classic soundtrack. Had the Bat Dance. Um, mm -hmm. And that was worldwide right there. Um, so mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure... I don't know the exact numbers, but I'm pretty sure he toured um, off of that album as well. Mm -hmm. That's very good. That's a great point because Batman is a pretty universal character, even though, again, he was created here in the U.S. by DC, you know, the people at DC Comics. Uh, everyone across the globe knows that symbol. So mm -hmm. that makes a whole lot of sense. So, Stephanie, let's talk a little bit about um, the fact that, I mean, Michael Jackson did have a long career and it was probably longer than Prince's, but just because, you know, he started as a child and mm -hmm. how do you think that influenced him to, I guess, grow and evolve? I think it influenced him to keep pushing himself, you know, to keep pushing his creativity and his artistry. Like I said, he started out as, as one member of a group and became the lead singer of the group. And then when he left the Jackson 5, went out on his own you can see his growth with each album i put off the wall that was a really good album from the late 1970s but it didn't do well at the grammys i remember he got shut out at the grammys and it upset him so much that he basically went home and created thriller which to me is probably one of the greatest albums he ever made one of the greatest albums period and even after thriller his other albums really pushed the boundaries of what his artistry and music and music abilities were. Like Bad was a really good album. History was another great album. Uh, this is it, his last album. So there were some really good albums he did, and each one seemed to progress a little bit more. That's a pretty good point. So Jason, I know we talked about Prince. Um, his career may not have been as long as Michael's, but it was just as successful. What contributed to his success since That's he got a little bit of a later start? A few things uh, contributed to his success. Crazy thing is, he actually started in the late 70s as well with um, that For You album. I want to say it came out in 1978. And shoot, his first two albums pretty much were like, kind of like a little slow, a little so kind of semi-soulful. Then in 1980, he came out with, um, dang, what's the name of it? I was just was thinking about it. Um, dang, 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 dang. Not <laughs> the album. And it, I just was thinking about it. But that album, the third album, it was like a complete 180. Dirty Mind, that's the name of the album. Dirty Mind, he started talking a lot about, started talking a lot more about sex and stuff like that, kind of being a little bit more promiscuous, promiscuous, and just went from like the little R&B stuff to the straight pop, and that right there took him to a whole nother level, and he kept following that up with uh, 1999, then of course Purple Rain, then in the 90s, he kind of switched it up when he dropped um, the most beautiful girl in the world album. And then in the 2000s, when he dropped 31, 21, he kind of like switched it up and went back to his old ways. And then he slowed down again when he, when he did that series where he was doing the, um, the piano and the microphone. So his ability to reinvent himself each decade and get new fans by still catering to his old fans is something that, I, shoot, I'd love him for him, man. I, I, I believe that a lot of his fans love him for as well. Yeah, I agree. I think that's those are some definitely some good points about um, Prince and his ability to uh, bring in new audiences. But to be fair, let's also talk about Michael Jackson. Um, and really, we, I guess we can talk about both of them in this instance because they have both passed on now. And their legacy, though, lives on because they were such icons and such trailblazers. Stephanie, talk a little bit about um, what it's like for people to discover Michael Jackson, I guess, in 2023. <laughs> well, I think to discover Michael Jackson in 2023 is to find an artist who really was timeless. You could listen to his albums from decades ago 
And the music still sounds good. It actually sounds better than a lot of the music you hear on today's radio. So I think his music is very relatable. Even though the videos may be a little dated, even the videos are, are still revolutionary when you think about, you know, how videos were created at the time, um, how he really revolutionized videos. He made the videos into like mini movies almost. And that's something that you see a lot of artists today do with their videos. Instead of just doing like a two or three minute video, they make a longer video that's more like a miniature movie. I think that's true. And I, I agree that um, people who discover him, you know, I mean, my kids love him and they had no idea that, first of all, when I told them that he was no longer with us, they were like, what? They were so sad. <laughs> you know, it's just hard to imagine when you hear somebody's voice on the radio or, or you know, Spotify or whatever, that they're not with us anymore. And then to talk about all these things that we do, the moonwalk, the thriller dance. And, you know, they do it, they do it in their um, gym class during Halloween mm -hmm. every year. And I'm like, yeah, that's Michael Jackson. They're like, yep. really? You know, so that's cool. But um, obviously, I feel like Prince has some things like that, too, Jason. What, what do you think it's like for people today to discover Prince? Because he's yeah. also still relevant. Yeah, if you listen, if if somebody is like listening to Prince for the first time, they're probably like, wow, classic music is great and this new music sucks. But not seriously, <laughs> um, you, you just listen to Prince. Like it's similar to like Michael Jackson. You got you had music that's transcending, that's timeless. Like you can listen to um a song like Uptown from Prince and you can relate to it because it's basically telling you, um, don't let society tell you what you do. You create your own thing, you live your own life, um, you go by you you basically just run your own race. Um then you could also listen to cut you could also listen to controversy, um, where he talks about if you believe in God, if you believe in yourself, just make things happen. And just don't pretty much try not to be a follower and try to be a leader and march to the beat of your own drum. And if you listen to that, if, if somebody's listening to Prince for the first time and if they can't relate to that, shoot, they might as well just listen to the mindless stuff that's, that's on the radio today. <laughs> I'm glad you guys brought up the, you know, today's artist um, because I kind of feel the same way. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I'm turning into my my parents. <laughs> but I, I mean, so <laughs> it's so crazy like I feel it, the same way yes mm -hmm. a lot of it is I feel like you know uh now correct me if I'm wrong I'm they both wrote their own music yes or Michael didn't write his music yes or he's some of it um, he wrote a lot of his own music but he did have song writers as well yeah, no I yeah. know I know Quincy Jones wrote a lot of Michael Jackson stuff too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and did Prince write everything that he sung or um, did he have yeah, some songwriters too majority he wrote majority, majority of it. Okay. Um, I know for a fact with Harper Rain, he had, um, I know Wendy and um, Julie, like who were, who were some of the members of his group, they helped him write some of the songs for some of those earlier albums. Right. Okay. So, but even based on that, even having help, like they both, both of these artists that we're talking about today had a heavy hand in what they were going to produce. You know, they didn't just take a song that somebody said, here, you need to sing this. And they sang it. Um, so I think that, that plays into, you know, it feels more authentic and uh, you can really feel that they believe in what they're singing and dancing to and all that kind of stuff. But um, so let's talk a little bit, too, about like maybe their controversial uh, sides, just because that those I think those are part of who they are and we need to talk about it. So, Jason, let's talk a little bit about when uh, Prince changed his name for a hot second there. <laughs> Yeah, what was the impetus changed. behind that, and 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 then why did he go back to Prince? And basically, um, he changed his name as kind of like a protest. Um, he didn't want to be a slave to the record label. Like I want to say, he was in his like late thirties at the time, and he realized that um, the the record labels and the contracts weren't aren't always the best. So basically, mm -hmm. that means that once you sign on that dotted line, you have to do what the record label says have to promote what they say, have to drop the songs that they want to do. And he didn't want to do that. So basically, he changed his name from uh, Prince, became the symbol. Um, I'll never forget when he did a performance and he had Slave written on his face. Um, I want to say it was Mark or something like that. And he did that protest for a couple of years just to let, let the record label know that he didn't want to be a slave and he wanted to like go against them. And he eventually became Prince again. Um, I'm not sure exactly if he got it 100% what he wanted with the record label, but 
I do think that what he did made some other artists pay attention to, to stuff, especially the smarter artists, because you really don't just want to just sign your name on the dotted line, because if, if, if you do, you're tied to them. You have to put out what they want. You may not, you may not get your royalties. You may not even get that much money off of album when it sells. So I think he definitely alerted and educated uh, other artists at the time about things like that and about how crazy or how messed up record labels could be. Whoa. So Stephanie, uh, Michael never changed his name, but he probably also had some, uh, I know he had some uh, disagreements, I guess is the best way to say that with his record labels and, and other people telling him what to do. I mean, I guess we could start talking about when he decided or I don't remember. Did he decide or did his dad just tell him he needed to break out on his own from the Jackson 5? I'm not sure about that one. If mm -hmm. it was his dad that made him break out or if he decided to move out on his own. I believe it was Michael's decision to go out on his own, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not 100% certain of that. But whatever, whoever decided that, it was a very good career move for him. It wasn't so good for his brothers. But <laughs> it really was a good career move for him because it really allowed him to stand out and shine on his own. Right. And do you feel like, I mean, I, I did not grow up with him in the Jackson five. He was, you know, I was younger and he was old. He was already in his King of pop era when I came around. But do you, do you remember either of you guys? Uh, I mean, cause y'all are not that much older than me either, but do you remember when he, when he started out on his own, were people receptive to it or were they confused? Cause he was no longer part of the Jackson five. I was a baby. So I was <laughs> okay. I mean, saying. Yeah, I, was okay. <laughs> I was a little kid when he first broke out onto his own, went out on his own and people really receptive to his album, like his album off the wall. I believe it was his first solo album and it did really well as far as like, you know, with audiences, it didn't do well at the Grammys though. But he, like I said before, he really kicked open the door with the Thriller album, his second solo album. That album just revolutionized music. It revolutionized how we looked at videos. I think it really brought a lot more people um, as fans of MTV and just fans of his music. Yeah, so I wonder, I think about, because you've said Off the Wall didn't do well at the Grammys, and I feel like the Oscars, the Grammys, the Emmys, whatever you want to say, those are kind of like benchmarks of success. But, I mean, I feel like I've discovered plenty of musical artists that don't even get nominated for a Grammy. So do you guys feel like the the Grammys are an indicator of whether or not these two artists are awesome or not really? It's just extra. <laughs> not at all. At this point, um, any award doesn't really mean anything to me. Like, if an artist get an award, it's cool. If they don't get an award, it's fine. Like, a lot of classic albums don't have that. Just like, I don't want to piggyback and be off Michael Jackson, but I love Off the Wall. Like, Off the, off the Wall, actually, I like, I actually like Off the Wall a little bit more than Thriller. And, I, like she said, they get any awards, but it's still a classic album. Um, some of Prince albums, they get, get some awards, but they're still good. Like, I know songs get recognition. And then, not to mention, at the end of the day, I don't think a lot of fans care. Like, the diehard fans, I don't think they care if the songs, if the if the album gets an award or not. I think they're just more focused on the music and if they can vibe and enjoy it. Right. Yeah, I think the artists care more about the awards than the fans do. And I agree with Jason. I've seen a lot of albums that were excellent albums that didn't get awarded at all. And then on the flip side, I've seen artists who weren't so great, who have a ton of Grammys, and I'm trying mm -hmm. to figure out why. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. It seems like it's a political game sometimes. It's whoever's currying the most favor at the time. Yeah. Okay. Um, or whatever record label feels like paying for it at the time. Right, right, exactly, exactly. So um, let's talk, I mean, let's talk a little bit about record labels because we talked about Prince being, um, having, you know, his protest against the record label. But, you know, if artists want to get discovered and get as big as MJ and Prince, you got to be with the record label. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel like if you try to independently go about it or maybe go with a smaller label, you're not going to get as discovered. 
do you, did Michael, I'm trying to remember because like, again, Jason and I were both young. <laughs> he was really in his prime. Um, did he, I guess he probably didn't struggle to get a record deal since he was already part of a group. Why right. he was with Motown for years. Mm -hmm. like he, uh, Motown was actually the original record label he signed with. And then I believe it was in the 80s that he signed with Epic Records. But Motown was his primary label. And who was uh, Prince's primary label? I think he was signed with, like, I can't remember the 80s, to be honest. But I think he was <laughs> officially signed with um, Warner Brothers. Um, Ooh, okay. I know that's who he got into it with, um... With the with the with the name issue and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Did he when he decided to change his name? Did he leave them? Um, I think he did leave them for a minute, and I think he had a subsidiary under there, which was Paisley Park. And I I do remember that being on a couple of his albums as well. Like I'm not sure when exactly his pay his Paisley mm -hmm. Park um joint thing started, but I know for a fact he was definitely on there for a while as well. Right. So I think. Too, we also should talk about the fact that you know, I mean, it's definitely been in the news lately uh, with Taylor Swift and her tour, her touring, how um, she's re-releasing albums that are hers because someone had bought her um, her catalog or or what. I don't really understand any of that. Is there somebody that owns Prince and Michael's catalogs, or do they do they have foundations that own them? How how do they you know keep their music going? I I know for um well I don't want to I don't want to talk about Michael Jackson I'll I'll let Stephanie handle it <laughs> but I know, I know about Michael Jackson stuff um a hundred percent with Prince I think his sister like I think well with both of them I know they are states around it and I think with Prince um I think his sister is in charge of the estate and she's not doing the best job with it unfortunately Michael Jackson mm -hmm. is straight though his his stuff is good um I can't remember the gentleman that runs it but. True man, he 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 ain't for, he's not playing any games. He's making sure that everything is legit. He's came out with these, like the box selection, the box section, just like um, last year, the 40th anniversary of Thriller came out. Nice little box set. It had um, the songs that we've heard before, then it also had some new, some unreleased music. So they they're doing good on their side. The print mm -hmm. side, not so much as of yet. If I'm not mistaken, there's a lot of infighting among Prince's family about which albums to release. Because he mm -hmm. had a ton of unreleased music, from what I understand. Yeah. So there's not a lot of infighting about what should be released, what shouldn't, who's going to get the money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it all boils down to the money a lot. Oh, which definitely. is sad because there's so many fans out there that would just love to hear the unreleased stuff. Oh, you know, because he's not creating anything new and everybody misses him, so... Release the release the Prince music. <laughs> I'm here. I listen to it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I guess we should have uh, prefaced this at the beginning that like uh, we don't hate MJ or Prince. We like everybody. Yeah, this is like her phone debating who's in the real. Yeah, oh, yeah. I love too. I who's grew up in? <laughs> <laughs> We're just. This is a friendly debate about who's the better. I don't know. Are we debating who's the better artist? Who's the better? Like who has more legacy? I don't know, because I feel like it's different. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about the legacy of each of these artists since they have passed on and are unfortunately no longer with us. You know, Jason, talk about Prince's legacy. Like, why do you think his legacy is better than MJ's? Well, I think Prince's legacy is better than MJ's just because, again, like I stated earlier, he was able to reinvent himself so many times. Um, he has fans all around the world, um, different people can rock with Prince at different times, whether it was that controversy slash 1999 period, the Bat Dance period, or even like the um, 3121 period, which was just different different types of music um, over the years. I also think that people realize that, okay, this dude went against the grain, went against the norm when it comes to going against Warner Brothers and stuff like that. When a lot of artists was just taking the money whether they was getting 10 cents per dollar or have, having to put out three albums in two years or stuff like that, Prince went against it. And I think it actually like helped future artists down the line because he did that. So I know that's definitely part of his legacy. Um, working with different bands like uh, New Power Generation and um, the other his other bands, I know that 
and show other artists that, okay, you can leave or you can break free from one group, go to another group and have success as well. And just let people know that you can create your own type of music and just make things happen and be a success. All right, Stephanie, that's a pretty good argument for Prince. <laughs> what about Michael's legacy? Um, Michael's legacy is that he appealed to such a broad variety of fans, not just in America, but around the world. So I think his music, his dancing, his movies really appeal to a lot of people. I also feel that another part of his legacy that we didn't touch on was that he was a smart businessman. Like um, him and Paul McCartney did a, a duo on a Thriller album called Say, 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 and they became friends. But their friendship kind of split apart after Paul McCartney found out that Michael Jackson bought the Beatles catalog. <laughs> and that was a really smart business move because the Beatles were one of the biggest fans ever. Yeah. To buy their catalog is really profitable. So mm -hmm. I think that was also Michael Jackson's legacy, that he was just a really shrewd businessman. I think just um, he was an overall um, just a, a round entertainer. Yeah, I think so, too, because I think a lot of people, um, obviously, obviously, he's known for his music. But there's also, you know, TV shows he's appeared in, <clears throat> excuse me, movies he's appeared in. So let's talk a little bit about that, too, because to be fair to Jason, Prince has been in some, uh, you know, movies and television shows. Mm -hmm. Prince or Jason, <laughs> I called you Prince. Jason, do you want to talk about Prince's um, other forms of entertainment? Let's see his other forms of entertainment. Um, well, besides um, Purple Rain, he was also in, I think, Under the Cherry Moon. Um, that movie didn't do good at all. It actually kind of sucked. <laughs> and, and there was a third movie that he was in as well. Um, I can't remember the name of that one because it wasn't that good either. Um, like, of course, he was like in a couple TV shows, um, had several music videos. Um, was on different talk shows and things like that, but he didn't have too many TV shows or anything like that um, at all. Like he mostly was just a performer, um, whether it was um, on worldwide tours or just local tours or even just performing in uh, Minnesota. So he was more focused on his music. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's Stephanie. Let's talk a little bit about Michael because obviously. The Wiz is going to be the biggest thing that he may be known for mm -hmm. outside of his music. That was a huge cultural moment. <clears throat> Excuse me. So talk about that and maybe talk about how we've talked a little bit about how his music videos transformed other artists and, and opened the doors for innovative music videos. But he was also on maybe some other shows, if I'm not mistaken, some other TV shows. He did a lot of variety TV shows, especially yeah. with the Jackson 5. They performed with Cher on her variety show in the 70s. So he did a lot of that type of television. And, of course, he performed on different award shows. He did the moonwalk at Motown's 25th anniversary, which is televised. So, and plus, he also did, like, a lot of the Grammy award shows he appeared because he was a nominee. What do you what do you think about his role in The Wiz? Do you feel like that was uh, a reason for people to go see that movie because he was so popular at the time and that's why he was cast? Or do you think he was perfect for the role or both? a little bit of both okay. um especially his popularity diana ross was also a huge star back then as well mm -hmm. but i think between the two of them they were really the box office draw for people to come and see that film and jason what about um for purple rain for prince a uh, couple things about purple rain i think that in 1984 when it was released um prince was just getting into his um his what's his 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 main his main um what's the level what's the thing I'm looking for? Uh, he was just getting into his like major period, like artist period, basically mm -hmm. kind of like his classic period where he released several several albums. So with Purple Rain being like a semi biography, people would definitely want to see it, and not just mm -hmm. because of Prince, but you also had Apollonia Six in there, also had Morris Day, and then he also had his band in there too. So it was just a good a good movie altogether and if you were like a, a prince fan or even like that genre of music who would who wouldn't want to see the who would want to see a movie that's talking about his life and it was also based in a city like minnesota to check it out yeah i think um 
that was probably one thing that Michael Jackson, I'm not sure he ever had any sort of biography other than ones that came later after he passed. <laughs> um, so, you know, and take those with a grain of salt because he was no longer with us. And, you know, people can say and do and and edit things the way they want to when they're talking about somebody who's not here anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but let's, I want to talk a little bit too about their, um, maybe their like charitable contributions to the world and and really just in music, the way that the two of them paved the way for other artists. Whoever wants to start with that. <laughs> Are you going to start, Jason? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty, uh, with chair, like I know for a fact he donated, but I can't lie, you got me on this one. I'm not sure what companies um he donated. Well, that's for. okay. Then you can talk a little bit about how he um paved the way for other artists yeah, like who um he, you know wanted to do the thing the things that he was doing. Yeah, like I know um let me see, let me see who I can start with. We can go back to like the early eighties with like his whole collective. Um his band, um hey. Why is the name escape? Why is everything escaping me? Right now? Like I had all my <laughs> I'm asking you about it right now. And now that we've done it, um, uh, let's see, let's see. I gotta give me a second. Let's see. It's right there. Like I even, I can't even think about it. But I'll, I'll talk about who else he's helped. Basically, in that they had that whole Minnesota sound. So mm -hmm. he eventually helped, of course, like his band. He helped Morris Day at the time as well. He also helped um, Alexander O'Neill and Sherelle. He just put on for like a whole lot of different artists. Um, Mint Condition, like Stokely from Mint Condition, they're from uh, Minnesota as well. So he helped um, whether mentor some of those people, put them on, on some of his early records. Just like, for example, Morris, Morris Day at the time were on a couple of um, early Prince records. And I know for a fact they signed with Paisley Park too. Um, like Morris Day was um, doing like some vocals. He also played some instruments on some of Prince's early um, records. And he just was looking out for people from his area. Don't forget Sheila E. Oh, yeah, of course, Sheila E. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe it. I can't believe I forgot Sheila E., who was actually mm -hmm. um, the best woman drumless in the world, in my opinion. Um, she is the truth. He he put her on. Um, like she can't, he, he actually helped her with that first uh, her first classic album, Glamorous Life. So mm -hmm. he, he, he did a lot. All right, Stephanie, talk a little about MJ. Okay, I know MJ did contribute to a lot of charities that were related to children's causes and uplifting children out of poverty. And he also, as far as his musical contributions, he did collaborate with a lot of different artists, especially with Motown artists, whether it was singing, songwriting. Like back in the 80s, there was an artist called named Rockwell. He's actually Barry Gordy's son, the owner of Motown. I mean, and he came out with this one called uh, I know like somebody's watching. I love that song. And that's a great song. <laughs> and Michael Jackson actually co-wrote the song and sang background vocals. And Jermaine Jackson actually sang background vocals too. That's pretty impressive if you can get uh, the king of pop to sing background on your song. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. And like I mentioned earlier, he was one of the organizers of the We Are the World song, which took place, I believe, after the Grammy Awards in 1985, mm -hmm. I think it was. He organized that where it was like 60-something like artists who were all basically singing um, for USA for Africa, you know, for famine relief. Mm -hmm. That was incredible. And that was a, that's hard to do because that's a lot of egos in one room. Definitely. <laughs> And they were able to collaborate seamlessly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, yeah, it was a good song. Nobody was trying to over uh, overpower one another. It was all a good collaborative effort. Um, yeah, so let's also talk, too, a little bit about the fact that uh, both of these artists face backlash when they were coming of, not of age, but of, of pop, rising in popularity. Um, you know, we talk a little bit about the fact that they... Um, paved the way for other black artists because they they had to endure some things, but they also were able to, you know, stay true to who they were. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, before I get to that, I just want to no. shout out. Oh, the okay. Other <laughs> Prince group is called the Revolution. I cannot believe I forgot that name, but I got to give them a shout out. But yeah, that's back, right. Yeah, going back to what you were saying. Um, 
yeah, they went through a lot of stuff. Like I know for a fact, um, a lot of black black music wasn't getting paid on um MTV at first, and Michael Jackson and Prince were some of the first artists to get their videos and stuff and their music played there played on um MTV. And once MTV did it, um, I think VH1 started following suit in other companies as well. So they were able to do that without basically selling out, um, not changing. They just continued to do their music and did what worked for them. And with Prince, um, again, that's part of the reason why him and Warner Brothers got into it because he w- he wouldn't sell out and just do what they want to do. So with him becoming um, the symbol for those few years, he was able to still make music and just do things his way until they um, reconciled and got got the contracts and stuff together. Did he legally change his name? Yeah, yeah it was. It was okay. Because he couldn't, yeah, he couldn't, yeah. He couldn't use Prince at all for like, gotcha. like years, two to three years. How awful that you have to change your name because somebody else owns it. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> it, it sucks. That's why people need to read those contracts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's that's your uh, financial advice coming from you, Jay. Um. So Stephanie, talk a little bit about how Michael. Um, helped you say you know you mentioned that he worked a lot with Motown and brought a lot of those artists in to collaborate and Mm -hmm. you know maybe mention some other things he did to help uh the black community get more into the music scene well I think just his um whole body of work his singing his dancing his talent it was just so impressive and just unprecedented like we never saw anyone like him and you notice a lot of artists today, especially R&B artists who are the younger sect, they also kind of imitate him. You can see that influence where they're doing the singing and the dance moves and they're creating the videos that are like movies. I agree. I was actually just, while you were talking about that, I was thinking about The weekend. Mm-hmm. The first time I heard a song that he sang, it was... Um, oh, it just left me. But it sounded like the first time I heard it on the radio, I was like... Is that Michael Jackson? Yeah. Who is that? I was so confused. I was like, I thought Michael died a few years ago. Who is that? Mm-hmm. Is this unreleased music? Yep. Y'all know what song I'm talking about, right? It's where it's a little more high pitched. Um, it's not blinding lights. It's uh yeah, I feel it I kind of like, Yes, like, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes. Yeah. The first time I heard it, I was like, That sounds like Michael. <laughs> that was That's crazy. When I first heard it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, thankfully I think he the weekend has, you know kind of moved on from that and he's doing some other things now a little mm-hmm. a little more techno a little mm-hmm. more that uh, he's coming to his own but I definitely agree that there's you know Michael still has influence to this day and I think yeah. Prince does too yeah, he does. Okay, so you need to have, find some artists that these days that you are like wow that sounds like Prince yeah I know I know for a fact uh like back in the day when Janae Monet first came out she was mm-hmm. kind of like she had that kind of Prince type swag with it also um Childish Gambino uh, like if you listen yes. to his last like like Redbone, Redbone sounds just like a Prince song. Um mm-hmm. even when Andre three thousand came when when he did the Love Below, a lot of people say that um his side of the C D, which is um Love Below Big Boys was speaker box. If you listen mm-hmm. to um She Lives in My Life She Lives in My Lap, it sounds like a Prince song as well. It's almost like like I love Andre three thousand and it, it's almost like he made like a like a Prince Junior type C D with that. <laughs> so cool. Like, if, if like a tribute. Yeah, if you haven't heard, if if people haven't listened, heard that song, it's on um the Love Below, and it's called "She Lives in My Lap." She lives in my lap, and it's it's a couple other songs on there that sound like um Prince songs too. That's a good album. I love that album, yep. and that group. If anybody's not familiar, it's they're Outkast okay. and they're together, yep. and they're separate. Andre Three Thousand and Big Boy. So yep. that's great. Um. I was just trying to think if I had any more questions. You guys have really brought it with this debate. This has been so good. I and also just love rehashing some artists who were, who are, who still continue to be even after they're gone. Like people still love them. Their music is still used. Yep. You still hear it in commercials and see it on TV shows. Yep. So I definitely agree that both of these uh, artists have had lasting marks on yeah. the entertainment and music industry. Is there anything else you guys want to add? Yeah, I got a couple of things. Just like you said, okay. um, even though the artists are still gone, fans still love them. Like every year, there are parties in multiple cities for these artists. Like I go, I go to a Prince party every year in Atlanta. 
That sounds incredible. It's off the chain. <laughs> and it's, it's every it's during Labor Day weekend. Every every Labor Day weekend for probably like the last four to five years, I've went to the park, and it's always a good time. Um, they've also had Michael. I've I've heard of a couple of Michael Jackson parties, but I haven't been here yet. Like I actually, I'm actually even in the early stages of trying to get some people to help me out to do a Prince versus Michael Jackson party because I know it'd be nice. Also, nice. Um, Prince, Michael Jackson's birth on um, the day Michael Jackson Michael Jackson's um death anniversary was just yesterday. So mm -hmm. social media was posting about him a lot. I saw a couple articles online. So. Um, I know for a fact a couple rec radio stations be playing mixes. Their songs still get a lot of play all the time. So mm -hmm. these people, these artists are shoot everlasting. Like they're gonna always have support because even though like we're getting older, it's a new generation of young people that don't want to hear the crap that's on the radio today. We hear the clean stuff <laughs> and the tech tour. Mm -hmm. Yes, Stephanie, did you have anything you wanted to add about MJ? Oh, uh, yes. I actually want to say also with Prince, what I really appreciate that with him is that he really opened the doors for experimental music. Like his music was very um, non-traditional. So I really appreciate that he allowed artists to be themselves and not have to feel like they're fitting in a box, like a pop music box in order to be popular. So he really did open the doors for experimental music. Uh, but for Michael Jackson... Like I said, I just think that um, his appeal just transcends um, so many different barriers and that he was just a consummate artist. He was a singer, songwriter, performer, dancer, and that his music that was made 30, 40 years ago is still very radio friendly today. I would agree with that. And I definitely, um, I'm glad you brought up that it was the anniversary of his passing yesterday, Jason, because I I heard a few more Michael Jackson songs on the radio than I normally do. And it didn't dawn on me until you just said that just now that that's why. Um, but like I've said before, and like we've all said that, you know, the the music transcends it transcends age, it transcends race, it transcends country, you know, there's people internationally that love these two artists. So it's not just like, oh, it's just an American thing. Like, no, everybody, their their impact is lasting. And I, I don't see it going anywhere anytime soon. Because Jason, like you said, like, we're all getting old. And we don't want to listen to them on the radio. <laughs> I love it. If I don't know if my parents listen to this podcast, but mom, if you do, I'm turning into you. <laughs> I don't want to listen to the crap that's on the radio. You know, you're old when you go in the store, the grocery store, and they're playing your music. <laughs> right? yep. You're like, wait, I love this song. And you're bebopping mm -hmm. down the aisles in the grocery yeah. store. Yeah. <laughs> that's happened to me a lot lately. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness sign of the times i know well then you were talking about stephanie you said 40 years ago for their albums and their work and i was like oh my gosh the 80s were i always think the mm -hmm. 80s were like 20 years ago yeah, it, seems, it seems like it <laughs> yeah, definitely seems like it but it was time is a thief especially mm -hmm. especially with me turning 40 this year so yeah oh no, 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 no. <laughs> that's, that's, that's interesting in itself time time <laughs> Well, you're just coming into your you're in the you're in your ripe old age yeah. of 40 <laughs> just the halfway point <laughs> um no but just kidding we're we're laughing about being old and i don't know you know we have stats on how many people are listening but we don't know what everyone's ages are so young people if you're listening appreciate your old your old folks music <laughs> yeah no <laughs> way so it'll stay around a while but all right, I'm going to wrap this thing up, and I've got to declare a winner. Um, this is so hard, you guys. Because they're such, okay, they're such great artists. They really are. Um, I guess I'm going to have to give this one to Stephanie. <laughs> Only because I feel like Michael Jackson just has a little bit of a leg up because of the longevity of his career. You know, I mean, Prince was such an innovator and Jason pointed out so many different ways that he changed who he, you know, changed who he was, but changed his sound and his style and, and gave people something fresh and new. And I think that's Absolutely. incredible. Exactly. So I don't want to, I don't want to say Prince is not good, but 
I definitely, I feel like Stephanie argued really well for MJ. <laughs> Thank you both so much for being part of the podcast episode today. And before we head out, Stephanie, just remind everybody where they can connect with you online if they want to uh, support you or not with your uh, defense of MJ. And my website is thestephanieallen.com. And I'm on Twitter at TechWriterSteph. And Jason, let the Prince fans know where they can find you. Hey, y'all can check me out on MyMoneyChronicles.com. I'm on Instagr Instagram at MyMoneyChronicles1 and Twitter at Money underscore Chronicles. That's perfect. So if you guys have any arguments or uh, any comments that you want to uh, say to Jason and Stephanie, either for or against whoever they were representing, feel free to get in touch with them online or, you know, leave us some comments when you see our clips and episodes upload to social media and uh, your favorite podcast platform. But until next episode, thanks for listening and watching everyone. Bye. All right. Everybody. That's a wrap. If you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to subscribe to the Wealth of Geeks podcast and leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. We have a ton of incredible content coming your way that you're not going to want to miss. Until, Until then, then, stay geeky. geeky.